I just want to explain why my life's count has been reset to 4 again, or in this case, 5, if you want to count for that. I'm guessing because of how the fact that the mayo itself is managed to able to come towards me, so that once again I managed to able to stack up about like 10 or so lives. See, Fernando, that makes it up, yes. Hey, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? I am Piglet here once again, and I'm back for some more if yet again we are from the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my last play of Super Mario Galaxy for the Nintendo Wii. So, last time we actually did manage to beat the likes of the King Catalic, and he forms that particular octopus looking boss. And also we did manage to able to continue exploring for the forms of the engine room, so that way we are able to actually collect the rest of the power stars in the forms of the engine room. And today for this episode is the fact that we are about to be continue on and moving on to the 6th and possibly the final dome in the entirety of the Super Mario Galaxy game. But before we do that, however, though, um, there's actually this little uh, house over there, which, conveniently enough, is actually known as the Gate Dome. So we'll investigate in here first, which, either way, we ended up back in here, at least ever since back in the very beginning of the game, after being getting crushed, or in this case, you know, just getting uh, knocked back by the forms of that chemic spell before entering Princess Peach's castle. So even then, though, that's because... Well, we are pretty unavoidable with that attack, mind you. And there's Rosalina here. This planet... is very dear to me. I looked forward to visiting this planet with the Lumas every 100 years. The Luma has that's been traveling with you may also grow up to become a star someday. Some Lumas become planets, some become comets, and a few become power stars. I'm traveling with them while they look for a place to be reborn. But I never thought all this would happen. Wow, Mama really trusted you. Well, how about this? If you grab all 100 purple coins here, then I'll earn you or earn my trust too. So, red stars, as far as uh, you know, for this specific power up, as you can see right there, uh, basically, it's essentially the final power up in the game, which even then, uh, what you can really do is the fact that you can able to actually, I'll explain more details as soon as we're able to obtain the power up itself, but even then though, let's see how this will go. See, Fernando, let's go ahead and obtain it, and you transformed into Flying Mario, spinning uh, spin when jumping to fly. And this means, uh, this is entirely by the forms of how the fact that with this particular power-up, this is essentially the last power-up you're going to be getting in the forms of the entirety of Super Mario Galaxy, the original game. See, Fernando, because of that, all you do here is the fact that we need to able to actually fly around for a bit in the forms of in a gateway galaxy, as far as I can usually tell by this point, because of that familiar planet that we actually been into from before. But this time around though is the fact that we can able to actually obtain, as you can see on the bottom left corner, as you can see we need to obtain 100 of those purple coins, which they are kind of like the equivalent to, uh, you know, obtain the 100 coin Power Star slash Shrine Sprite in Super Mario Sunshine and Super Mario 64 slash Super Mario 64 DS. Except the fact that the only difference is, is the fact that the coins themselves has been into purple colors. See, for now, no, that makes it purely obvious with this point. So, as you can see, we're going to be taking control of Flying Mario right there, which is essentially the only time we're going to be using this particular power-up in any forms of that specific entire game. Because it only happens in one star mission, and that's the forms of you know, this mission entirely, because after that, well, it might be a little bit more less situational than new forms of how it did, any forms of any other power-ups, like fire flowers, ice flowers, spring mushrooms, for instance, and even the forms of the bee suit, and, uh, even Rainbow Mario as a result for that matter, and including body forms of uh, Boo Mario, as far as I usually can tell by this point, and um, that's as far as I can go for this particular power-up, guys. But even then though, I think it only happens whenever you just get this particular uh, music theme in the background, like every time you've ever obtained the Rainbow Star from, or no, the Red Star I should say, so that way you can able to listen to that every single second, and I believe 
Uh, most likely in forms of how he did for Rainbow Mario, and Ice Mario, and Fire Mario, as far as I can say for this matter. It only lasts for about a certain amount of time. It doesn't go infinite, regrettably, because as you can tell, if you hear it closely enough, then, or in this case, hearing it carefully, then the music will start to go a little bit more faster, and as a result, uh, the only way you can able to cancel that power-up is, of course, be able to actually wait until that music starts to go a little bit more faster, and especially noticeable how the fact that it goes like a do 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 and it starts to worn out. So even then, that makes it purely obvious with this, uh, you know, for this specific power-up. So, basically, uh, as far as the actual, uh, flying Mario, as far as this is concerned, uh, basically, you shake the Wii mode in order to actually just to fly, like, kind of like how he did for Peter Pan, almost, except, well, without any pixie dust or anything like that. I make it as a, uh, Peter Pan reference here and there, or in this case, it's especially noticeable with that knowledge right there, but, either way, though, enough about this little, um, pointless, uh, speech to able to work on with, but either way, though, let's go ahead and find... Oh, actually, missing out on that one purple coin. Oh, there's one purple coin right there. Now, I'm definitely going to save the last one until whenever we get towards the very um, top of the actual tower, as you can see right there. And even then, note that, uh, yeah, they are scattered all over the place when it comes to the purple coins and such. But even then, note, once you've complete, uh, once you've collected uh, 100 purple coins, then we actually stumbled across a different colored power star, which apparently is, is supposed to be the red power star, so I believe this might actually be the only, um, red power star in the game, because as a result, um, because of the usage of the forms of the red star and stuff. See, Veneno, there we go. And the mission is called Gateways Purple Coins. See, Veneno, because we actually did done, um, two missions on that specific, um, beginning galaxy all alone. And then after completing that level, or in this case for this mission entirely, then we get ourselves the next Hungry Lumba. See, for then though, that um, hopefully we might as well go for that next. But before we do that, actually, uh, much like how he does it in the forms of how you might actually think about it, that much like in the forms of uh, the engine room, I'm going to be actually activating that shortcut to the forms of the sixth and the final dome, which is of course the garden, which either way, uh, the way that it usually finds it with it is the fact that we need to go onto the back side of that entrance way. So that way we could able to actually find that throughout right there. And then as a result, if you once again activate this, then you should able to instantly transport it to the actual shortcut. So not only to the forms of the actual uh, garden dome very easily, but also you can able to actually access to it by simply just able to exploring through the actual garage. So. Yeah, everything else checks out there for the most part, and that's just how it is for me. See, but then though, no. um, yeah, not much else you can tell. So, of course, today was actually forms of, uh, the 12th of, uh, February in 2019, so, uh, I'll explain more details about the forms of, I said this before, about the forms of my copy at the moment of, um, Sonic 3D Flicky's Island for the sake of Saturn later, because for now, we need to able to feed, uh, 1200 slash 112 a uh, thousand star, be uh, star bits, sorry for a little bit, of, little bit of a tangent right there, and basically after feeding him for about, you know, um, you know, 1200 star bits, and then as a result, you were able to unlock the Boo's Boneyard Galaxy, see, for then though, that, um, yeah, that, as far as I can tell, and luckily for me, we still got plethora of the forms of those star bits left, before he's saving up for the final, um, Hungry Luma stage. See, Fernando, let's get to it with Boo's Boo, uh, Boneyard uh, Galaxy, and that mission is actually called Racing the Spooky Speedster. And it appears to be we're going to be racing against with the exact same uh, Boo as of how it does it from before. Except the noticeable difference is this time around is the fact that it's going to take place inside the forms of that specific planet itself or something. And second of all, I believe we need to utilize the Boo Mushroom this time around instead of by the forms of the Pole Star ability. Well, in this case, the Pole Star, uh, you know, points of the Wii Mode Syndrome. See, but then no. Uh, just like before, I believe we need to be able to beat him in first place. So, um, the thing is about this mission this time around though, to me though, that I found this a little bit more difficult than before, because normally in the Polestar version, in forms of uh, a very spooky spirit or sprint, in forms of him back in Ghostly Galaxy, I found it to be very easy to able to authorize. 
But on the other hand though, that cannot be applied for this this time around to me because, well, usually I'm good at it right up, uh, usually good at it right about now. But here's the thing about this, the forms of this mission in particular, that um, you're going to be spending most of your time trying to able to actually go down the actual racing track instead of like, uh, you know, going straight forward. But here's the thing, is the fact that these obstacles will love to get in your way. Even by the forms of those little shifting walls, don't forget. But as a result though, if you're not paying attention to that whatsoever, and if you keep on bumping into those walls several times, and you let the actual Boo uh, Speedster manage to catch up, and manage to get into the finish line before you do, then, you know, the game tells you to able to actually just to force you to able to lose a life. So as a result, we can't let that happen. See, for Neno, since we've actually done it on the first attempt, that way I should able to make yourselves comfortable with it. So, there we go. And I believe that's pretty much it when it comes to the Gate Dome. So, again, there's only like uh, two missions to handle with, even by the forms of the Purple Coin mission, and there's one from, you know, the Hungry Luma stage. So, there we go then. So now we need to focusing on now is, of course, the Golden Dome, which, you know, unlike in any other domes in this game, uh, there was only four galaxies to explore because I see the uh, the reason why they do this is because well they're naturally going to be uh, placing the forms of the actual true final level while the final main level in the game which is essentially the last Bowser stage mind you spoiler alert um, basically because they want to put it separately so just in case they don't have enough time to be able to actually put that in the forms of the Garden Dome so. Yeah, at the moment, we've only just got four galaxies to work on now. So anyways, though, let's unlock the first stage in the Garden Dome, and that, it has to be the Deep Dark Galaxy. So even then, I will go ahead and hit in there first. So here we go, onto the first mission, the Underground Ghost Ship. Could be mysterious around here, but even then, I will uh, investigate and see what happens there. But on the other hand though, I'm assuming this mission actually uh, got um, the secret mission. See, even then I might as well go for that first before I start to doing this particular mission for throughout. See, even then there's nothing else to be said and done. But before we do this, however though, we need, we actually get to get ourselves um, the cannon shot from here. And I'm actually going to be shooting from the right because this planet is kind of familiar because it's like... Um, the Gateway Galaxy again, except everything else is super small. What I mean small is, is because, well, the pillars are somewhat of a medium size, even the houses themselves are pretty much small. But either way though, that's because of that little knot right there, or in this case for that screw right there. Now, if you manage to able to try to crouch uh, right through the actual door gap, as you can tell because of how I'm going to be showing you guys to see how I'm talking about here, that, um, because I've learned this back in during the likes of in 2008, by the forms of the actual tips and tricks back in the day. Um, as you can see, I've managed to able to clip through inside the actual house. And as you can see, I'm actually inside the actual house itself. But, as you can see, that most of the actual, like, um, visual cues doesn't seem to able to actually load it up properly. So with that being said, uh, you can easily escape it out by simply just able to walk out the door. So even then, though, that makes it very simple and self-explanatory to get out of there, so... But as you can see, that the actual planet itself starts to get shrinking because, as you can tell, this is completely inflatable. So even then, though, as a result, we Men, I love doing that. Even though, no, that you can you can get those coins in addition with that, so naturally that's all I usually most for me the most. But on the other hand, though, that once that's been uh, disappeared, uh, you can no longer get into that planet again unless if you do a different mission. See, even then, no, that makes it very simple. But anyways, the reason why I'm going back in here and able to actually fire myself from here again, just because I need to able to farm those star bits. But even then though, it's kind of redundant though, because even then though, well, it wasn't until when we get to the forms of uh, uh, the next level after this, well, not so much for this level, but any forms of the upcoming levels in the future, that um, I'm actually going to be able to actually stop doing the forms of farming those star bits for now, up until whenever we get to the forms of that next level, that usually uh, forces you to able to get like, uh, you know that uh, star count requires uh, 52 stars at the time? 
So even then, I'll save that for later. But even then, though, from now on, though, let's go ahead and use the Fire Flower, or in this case, Fire Mario, if you will. That way, we could be able to actually access to the forms of the different path, or in this case, the opened cage. So even then, uh, before we get into that, however, though, we'll go ahead and once again farm those um, star bits as much as I can. But again, pretty redundant to able to do that nowadays because I've already got uh, quite enough star bits as a result for this point. Because after all, that um, until we're never we able to unlock the final hungry Luma on the forms of that specific uh, title as a result, um, you know, we're pretty much going to be sorted for this point. So even then. Um, the way the secret mission is going to be located, we need to go all the way down, swimming down here, as a matter of fact, and obtain the forms of the green shell right there. And you know these little mine bombs right there? Aim it for it, because if you do, with the green shell specifically, then the actual uh, shipwreck is going to be completely destroyed, and as a result, it reveals a secret path. And what that leads you to? Inside the box. Hmm. Kind of weird, if I have to say so for that much. And basically, in this mission, is the fact that it's pretty simple. Basically, as you can tell, uh, not only do we get ourselves by the forms of that specific origin right there, but also the boo itself. Because either way, um, the boo itself actually contains a power star itself. But in order to actually do that, we need to keep on uh, flipping those switches most of the time to reveal any kind of gravity up until when we get to this side of the cube. And as a result, then you would able to actually smash that little crystal so that way it reveals a shine light because you know that's what boos our weakness is too. And as a result, if the boo has been uh, completely annihilated by the forms of that specific uh, shine light, then the power star is about to be on its normal state. And as a result, you can able to grab it from you know just keep on switching between those uh, gravity when it comes to you know changing switches all the time. So. The secret mission is called Boo in a Box, because, you know, because Boo in a Box, that's all there is to say. But again, this is a little bit more of a coincidence anyway, so in either way, let's head back in here again, and this time around, we'll do the actual uh, first mission properly. See, for then though, hopefully we might as well be able to get this galaxy done before we're able to move on to the next couple of stages. Well, not so much from here and there. Oh wow, this takes really long to able to load things up. I think this is the only time that it does attempt to take forever to load sometimes. But I'm guessing because I'm just speeding things up, or perhaps it's maybe because of how the fact that the game is trying to able to load up um, so much of it, which I can assume that's what this will go. But either way though, let's just go ahead and just uh, do the usual same thing, except, well, we need to go for a normal pathway that we can take by simply just able to actually follow those star bears as a result. But I digress. So anyways though, let's go ahead and get that fire flower after that smashing that enemy right there and... What the hell? <laughs> I'm guessing that Rainbow Star doesn't like power-ups in addition to that. I'm guessing they managed to toss it away because I'm presuming this matter is the fact that I'm pretty sure the Rainbow Star is completely overpowered or something, but either way though, that's just one of those rare occasions where if you accidentally manage to become the Rainbow Mario as a result, um, basically that if you accidentally run into the forms of the power-ups you do really want, like for instance the Fire Flower I've shown you, and as a result, if I accidentally run into that, uh, basically the actual Fire Flower will no longer going to be present. Well, the good thing about it though, is the fact that um, the actual power-up itself will respawn. So even then though, that way you can able to re-grab it again. But as a result for that matter, it's a little bit of an accidental purpose. So anyways though, let's go ahead and swim from this side, instead of like, uh, going deep down there. And as a result, that way we can able to actually just uh, proceed from that way. Even though it's kind of like how he does the same thing, or this level is pretty much exactly similar to the forms of the Big Mouth Galaxy, except, well, a lot more bigger. And as a result, though, we can able to actually access to different areas and stuff. See, even then, though, yeah, that's as far as I can say how this will go. So anyways, though, um... And what was I going to say? Um, actually, I'll get into more details on that on the next mission later on, because for now, um, here we are into that main destination point right there. I was trying to able to actually get those star bits from underneath the actual uh, boat ship, but um, I've got, you know, I've already got enough of them as it is for, for the time's sake. See, even then, though, because there was actually a question mark coin down there, and I was like, oh, I can't be bothered for this point right now. Oh, what the? 
Okay, she did come back right there. Ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a, um, let's just say a rematch against with the forms of the Camarilla. But except the fact that you know, you know noticeable differences, this time around though is the fact that she now got herself uh, four hits this time around though instead of three. Because we've already just fight her ever since the forms of Space Junk Galaxy. But except in Space Junk Galaxy, uh, basically she has like uh, three uh, hit points. But now that he forms of the uh, Deep Dark Galaxy, she now actually has, you know, four hit points. Just to make it a little bit more harder or challenging for most players out there. But honestly, I found it's very easy though, until later on as it is. Because either way though, that um, basically this boss fight is exactly like how he did from last time, except that in the forms of the second phase of the fight, now she actually just starts to able to go from on top of that little, uh, on top of the ship itself. And as a result, that's, you know, we only have like, uh, you know, just four hits to deal with her. Well, first two from the first phase, and then the other two for the second phase. So, but again, self-explanatory, but honestly, that as long as you know what you're doing, like myself included, then you should be able to deal with this boss fight no problem. So you can end up that, uh, yeah, you know. The only time it makes it really tricky for you, especially you don't want to let that uh, Camilla fool it, uh, keep on fooling you, is the fact that sometimes she almost gets really close to you when every time, whenever, when she starts to able to go into teleportation mode or something like that. But just be very careful by that. But once you're done with all that, then the mission is done. So, yeah, not bad and not too shabby either. So, there we go. Yeah, so that's what I can say about it here. So, 86 Power Stars, so we're getting quite close towards the end of um, the Mario's playthrough of the forms of this particular game. And I know I'm not gonna spoil things up just yet, because I know many people already know what I'm gonna talk about here, but either way though, let's not mention about this throughout any early points for this video. So even then though, let's head back in here and do the next mission, Bubble Blast Off means we're going to have to deal with a lot of bubble situation here. Well, unlike any forms of how it did in uh, Bubble Breeze Galaxy, and especially noticeable with, uh, uh, what's another mission that usually involves around the bubbles? Oh yeah, the secret mission in uh, Gold's Leaf Galaxy, we don't take control of the actual bubble itself. So instead, it's going to be Bubble Fest. So anyway, so from the get-go, is the fact that this is entirely optional for you, but basically we've stumbled across this guy again, but, um, somehow we're actually going back into the forms of a water uh, machinery again. But as a result though, it just makes it a little bit more tricky if you manage to able to get closer to him though. The only time you can only do this though, is the fact that that's what the coconut stands for. And as a result though, because if you manage to aim your coconut at the right moment, especially by the forms of that straight shot, then you were able to deal the amount of damage to the forms of this particular multi mole right here. And then if you've done so, then you were able to actually access to the actual cannon. But, um, that might be the only reason why that's there for first-time players who ever experienced this. But, um, honestly, I found it's very optional, though, because since I'm actually become a hardcore gamer like myself included, um, as a result, if you manage to triple jump from here, that normally you can able to actually go from there normally by simply just able to obtain the ice flower to begin with. Because that's why the actual uh, water itself will come in. And then as a result though, you can able to actually just, uh, you know, go from here and onwards. So, but for me, I usually take my shortcut routes, so just in case I manage to do my triple jump, and especially noticeable with that wall jump at the same time, so naturally I can be able to actually reach up in the highest height. So as a result, I had an easier time with. But I digress. See, for Nendo, let's go ahead and just uh, grand pound those little tree stomps here. I think there were only like three of them around here. But even then, once you've done so, then you can able to fly on to the forms of the final planet in this mission. And for this specific section right there, you have to grand pound all three of these little moving marbles at the same time. And as you can see, if you manage to perform this well enough, specifically for that specific combo, then you were able to reveal a giant watermelon? Okay, a little bit odd, considering, but the only thing you need to watch out for is, of course, the lasers. See, for then, no, that's the only thing you need to dodge. But there we go, that's our bubble blast off. And as a result, I managed to be able to done this for about almost under two minutes or something, even though I kind of wish there was actually a time record or anything like that. Until Super Mario Galaxy 2 came around, they did actually introduce into ourselves 
like a time attack syndrome, or in this case, a time records or something like that. Specifically by the forms of mostly missions in the game anyway, so... Anyways though, let's head back into the forms of the Dark Galaxy for the fourth time in a row and do the next mission, which is... Uh, Gopi and the Underground Lake. So this might actually be the second time we're actually gonna be bumped into him since Sea Slide Galaxy, but except... Everything else is in underwater now. Well, usually it's kind of like the same thing, but, um, you know, except the fact that we're actually on a different environment instead of, like, you know, it's daylight, um, setting. And as a result, though, you know, you get the idea. And we can no longer going to be actually access to the forms of the cannons now because all you have to do is basically we need to swim underwater for most of the time anyway. So, yeah, you get the picture for this point. So anyways though, let's go ahead and swim down here very, very carefully. And also we need to watch out for the forms of the actual giant eels once again. And even especially noticeable, we need to keep an eye out with the forms of that air meter as well. So don't let that waste it. So here's Gopi right down here. See so Fernando, let's go ahead and have a chat with him. What? You again? You got to you got to be kidding me. You want to run uh, run me out of this lake? You gotta go for all eight rings. Really? We have to go for all eight, re eight rings again? Jeez. So basically, this mission is exactly like how it did from before, except I found this one to be a little bit more trickier than uh, Sea Slide Galaxy, because the thing is about this one, though, is the fact that, well, it might be very easy if you know what you're doing, but um, if you notice if you have a first time playing this game, you might get yourselves really, really ticked off, especially by the forms at the very end, and you know what I'm talking about. Me, Veneno, because basically, it, you know, just like before, that we need to able to bypass through eight, uh, all eight rings. That's all they're really, uh, as far as this mission will go. But here's the thing, is the fact that these, the first seven rings wasn't too much of a big of a deal. But the last one, on the other hand, though, holy crap, you have to go for these little toy pines, as far as you can see right there. Unless, if you're trying to able to do that strategy like I do here, things can get a little bit more easier throughout. But whenever I play this game for the first time, I got a lot of struggle with that last darn ring, because as a result, I swear I was trying to able to go through it, but next thing you notice is that the, these toy pines just really screws me up. But as a result though, yeah, alright, I'm a fish, off my word, take this. And we're never gonna see him in the light of again, or in this case, we're never gonna see him in the light of day, because of how the fact that in the sequel, we're never gonna make him a comeback after all, because either way though, I'm presuming he might be dead by then. Well, I don't know if that's if, well, if what if though, although it might be a little bit of a nonsensical, um, Paradox statement, but either way though, that's pretty much it for this mission. And if I remember correctly, we got ourselves our prankster comments right now, see so Veneno because we've done most of these missions now, and as a result, yep, there it is. Because we also managed to reach up to, you know, 88 power stars, so we've actually reached onto the even number amount of stars. So here we go, on to, once again, the Daredevil comments. So here we go with, uh, Ghost Ship. Daredevil run. See, Veneno, I'm guessing because we need to have a rematch against with, uh, uh, Camelo again, but except we've, uh, one health left. Well, for, uh, Mario's standpoint anyway, because I'm sure enough, uh, Camilla, she managed to still got herself by the forms of, uh, four heads to spare. So, um, that I guess. Um, yeah, because it's been a while since we've actually done those, uh, Daredevil run missions ever since back in the garden. Well, as far as the actual Golden Dome as it is, see even then, that makes it all be obvious. So anyways though, before we end off this video actually, while well, I'm gonna be concentrating on this boss fight in particular, because it's the exact same fight as before, but except you only have like, uh, you know, you have to deal with, uh, just one health on you. See so even then, though, again, if you mess up at least once, then you have to redo the entire mission again. And as a result though, that can get pretty frustrating at times. But honestly, if you manage to know what you're doing, you will be fine. So anyways, about my forms of my game at the moment, with Sonic 3D, uh, Sonic 3D, Flicky's Island, sorry for a little bit of tongue twisting in the end, um, for my sake of Saturn copy of the game, um, it, it, it did work okay, but, um, nothing outstandingly when it comes to playing it perfectly, because there are a few times though, I've run into the forms of game freezes and all that stuff, but I'm guessing because of, uh, my copy of the game itself is currently, 
um, got scratches at the moment. But it did work just fine, as long as I able to actually give it a test. Most notably, I did manage to test out by the forms of the first zone, which is of course Green Growth Zone in Act 1. Now, what if I get to the um, the first time ever experiencing the special stages in the Saturn version of the game, and then as a result, after I've managed to accomplish it, like I've got all the rings and everything, and obtained the first key assembled, somehow I just realized that my copy of the game seems to doesn't seem to play properly. And as a result though, I really need to fix it up, because even then though, if I didn't able to finish the game during time, whenever this thing keeps on happening to me, then I have to able to fix that. So even then though, that way I can give my uh, thoughts of the actual Saturn version of the game. So even then though, that makes it a little bit obvious. So, there we go folks, that concludes buddy forms of this particular galaxy for now, which is Deep Dark, da um, deep, deep dark Galaxy. Now I'm going to end things off here, I'm afraid guys, so to uh, join me next time on Let's Play Super Mario Galaxy is the fact that we're going to be continuing on the rest of the Golden Dome. So see you then.